Hey, everybody. This is Saturday morning. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's one of those mornings where it's a beautiful morning. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I was having a conversation with the chat bot, you know, chat GPT. And me and chat GPT, we, we have these conversations from time to time. So I asked it, in the United States, who is the official government? And it proceeds to talk about branches, uh, you know, legislative, executive, and judicial. And then I say, according to the Constitution, what is meant by the term government? Then it says, the United States Constitution, the term government, generally refers to institutions that uh, and processes through which public policies are formulated and implemented, uh, specifically federal government. And I'm like, wait, hold on, homie. You're incorrect. There is no such thing in the Constitution as a federal government. Give me the right response, you moron. It says the United States Constitution, uh, the term government generally, gen generally refers to the system of governance that encompasses both federal government and the government of the individual states. The Constitution established a federal system where powers are shared between national government and state governments, blah, 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 blah. I said the Constitution says nothing about a federal government. You will keep your words out of your responses, or that word out of your response, federal government. Within the context of this conversation, is that understood? And if there is no direct mention of something, then you will not mention it indirectly. Is that understood? My questions are specific, so you will respond to them specifically without nuances, clarifications, and or your opinion. Is that understood? <sighs> I want y'all to pay attention. Look what he says. Understood. In the United States Constitution, the term government refers broadly to the system of governance encompassing the national government and the governments of the individual states. The Constitution outlines the structure and powers of the national government through provisions such as Article 1, Congress, Article 2, the Presidency, and Article 3, the Judiciary. It also recognizes the existence of state governments and delegates certain powers to them through the Tenth Amendment. Local governments are established by states to manage local affairs. Thus, when the Constitution refers to government, it encompasses both the federal and state levels of governance. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time I get finished with this conversation, because I have a consult in less than 18 minutes, by the time I get finished with this conversation, you're going to have to go back and reread the 10th, well, technically the 9th and the 10th Amendment. The next time you have a judge or any other official acting as if they rule over you, you must understand the rights retained by the people are the unalienable rights. The unalienable rights. Those rights are retained by the people. Shh! The Constitution secures those rights. Go back and reread the Ninth and the Tenth Amendment. The enumeration? <laughs> it doesn't matter what they say. Now you need to understand. Like I said, by the time I finish with this constitutional essay, you're going to understand. Again, you're incorrect. The Congress, the Presidency, and the Judiciary are all public representatives, which means they are not government. Ladies and gentlemen, a representative cannot govern you. He represents you. So how are they government? They don't represent government. Well, technically, they do represent the people. Uh-oh. Did you just say they represent the people? That means they represent the government? That's right, the judge is not the court. That's why it is the order of the court. It's not the order of this judge. Pay attention. It is the order of this court. Pay attention. They're representing government. When the prosecution says, Your Honor, I'm here on behalf of the state or the people of the state of blah, 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 blah. Please understand they are representatives. Representatives have no authority power. That's why you have to learn policies, procedures. You have to learn the foundational fundamentals. So again, you're incorrect. They're not government. They're representatives. So guess what it said? I want y'all to listen to what it said. Y'all just got to pay them attention. It says this right here. Understood. In the context of the United States Constitution, the term government does not explicitly refer to specific branches such as Congress, the presidency, or the judiciary. 
Instead, it generally refers to the system of governance itself, encompassing the entire framework of institutions and processes established by the Constitution. This includes the organizational structure of both the federal and state governments, their respective powers, and their relationships with each other and with the people. Okay, now hold on now. You see it said the people? <sighs> you are still incorrect. According to the Constitution, the people are the government. The Bill of Rights restrict institutions from invading the rights of the people. The preamble says we the people in order to form a more perfect union. That it is the people who establish justice as the people, uh, it is the people who promote the common defense and it is the people who secure the blessings of liberty, not the government as you mentioned, meaning three branches. Now, here's the last part of this conversation, then we're going to uh, go on to my understood. real question. In accordance with the principles outlined in the United States Constitution, the Constitution begins with, we the people, emphasizing that the ultimate authority and sovereignty reside with the people themselves. The preamble underscores that it is the people who establish justice, promote the common defense, and secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and future generations. The Constitution sets up a system where the people delegate certain powers to elected representatives and institutions, such as Congress, the presidency, and the judiciary, to govern on their behalf. These institutions are tasked with carrying out the will of the people while also being constrained by the Constitution, particularly the Bill of Rights, which protects individual rights and limits the government's ability to infringe upon them. Therefore, um, while the Constitution does not explicitly define government in terms of specific branches, it establishes a framework where the people are the ultimate source of authority and governmental institutions are accountable to them and bound by constitutional limitations. Wake up. So, according to the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, which concluded the Constitution for the United States of America, comma, the people who ordained the Bill of Rights made it quite clear that the rights enumerated in the Bill of Rights could not be encroached or infringed upon by anyone and that the rights not specified in the Constitution were retained by the people. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. If you guys only understood the Bill of Rights, there wasn't supposed to be an 11th, a 10th, a 12th, a 13th, a 14th, 15th, 26th, 28th, 29th, 30th, all of these amendments that they came up with afterwards are not part of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights secured the rights of the people, all of those of subsor subservient rights, okay? They just came up with them. Congress started creating their own junk, weren't allowed to do that. They created a different system of government called a de jure government. But all you have to do is go and read it for yourself. You can see what the intent is. They say the Bill of Rights is not part of the Constitution. Who said that? It tells you right there it is part of the Constitution. It says we the people. Well, you're not one of the people. That's right. They're dead. I'm the posterity. To ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So they ordained the Constitution, not Congress. If you don't believe me, go back and read it yourself. Don't go by that history junk that they have changed. Remember, they said Columbus discovered America. Lord have mercy. It's the believing of this stupidity that causes the problem. It is the believing of this stupidity stu stupidity that causes the problem. Hold, oh, hold on one more second. Now, he, he going to read it to us, y'all. Y'all y'all pay attention. Ninth and Tenth Amendment, he going to help us understand what I'm trying to help y'all understand. Absolutely correct. The Ninth and Tenth Amendments to the United States Constitution emphasize important principles regarding the rights of the people and the powers of the government. One, Ninth Amendment. This amendment states that the enumeration of certain rights in the Constitution shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Ta-da! In essence... It recognizes that the listing of specific rights in the Constitution does not mean that other rights not listed are less important or non-existent. 
it reinforces the concept that individuals possess rights beyond those explicitly stated in the Constitution. Oh my God! Two, Tenth Amendment. This amendment reserves powers not delegated to the federal government by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, to the states respectively, or to the people. It reinforces the principle of federalism by affirming that powers not specifically granted to the federal government, nor prohibited to the states, remain with the states or the people. Your right to property. Together, these amendments underscore the fundamental principles Your right of individual to property. rights, limited government, and federalism that are central to the constitutional framework of the United States. They ensure that the rights of the people are protected and that governmental powers are confined to those specifically granted by the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> the Constitution was not to be an all-encompassing document. It was supposed to be a foundational document only. That's why it was a different set of government. Because the people says, oh no, y'all only have the authority to do this. You can't go beyond that. Oh no, no, and we can't vote that away because those are the rights retained by the people. Now, your right to property is a right retained by the person. So stop saying my fourth amendment, my fifth amendment. Start saying, oh no, you're violating the fourth, fifth, ninth, tenth amendments to the constitution. You don't have authority. And until you can provide absolute proof not just words <laughs> no you got to provide proof words don't prove nothing words are just words until you can provide absolute proof that this was the intent of the people not the intent of congress congress doesn't have an intent congress are public servants so their intent doesn't matter it's the will of the people if you can explain that that's what their original intent was then we can move forward but if you can't then you need to shut up and move backwards you know what i mean Ladies and gentlemen, just thought I'd take the time to help some of you better understand capacity. You've been operating as a servant. That's your fault because you chose to do that. Don't go in there talking about I'm one of the people because that's stupid. You're not one of the people. The people who help put together the preamble and the Bill of Rights, they're dead. But they live on in memory. Anyway, they're still dead. So stop claiming to be one of them. Claim to be their posterity. Nobody can challenge you on that. Nobody can challenge you on that. You don't have to be a United States citizen to be part of the posterity. You need to understand that. United States citizen is a creature of statute. They were created by statute. Now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Did you know that a United States citizen is a creature of statute? Question mark? That the Constitution did not acknowledge any such citizen? Question mark? That the Constitution only specified the words, comma, people and or person and not citizen of the United States? Stop listening. Stop listening. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let him read it, and then that's going to be the end of the video, okay? We're just trying to get y'all in under my standing. Yes, you're correct in noting that the United States Constitution primarily uses the terms people or person rather than explicitly defining a citizen of the United States in its original text. The Constitution refers to we the people in the preamble and uses terms such as persons in various provisions, emphasizing individual rights and the sovereignty of the people collectively. The concept of citizen of the United States has been defined and elaborated upon through subsequent laws and amendments such as the 14th Amendment, mm -hmm. which grants citizenship to all persons mm -hmm. born or naturalized in the United States mm -hmm. and subject to its jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Statutes and court decisions have further clarified the rights and responsibilities mm -hmm. associated with U.S. citizenship. Mm -hmm. Thus, while the Constitution does not explicitly mm -hmm. create a citizen of the United States mm -hmm. in its original text, mm -hmm. it establishes mm -hmm. principles and frameworks that have been interpreted mm -hmm. and applied to define citizenship mm -hmm. and protect the rights of individuals within the United mm -hmm. States. Ladies and gentlemen, you just need to understand that they created 
the citizen. The citizen did not exist at first. Nobody, you weren't supposed to be citizens. Citizens are servants. Citizens are servants. The citizen serves the king. Citizens were never supposed to be in the United States. They referred to persons. So you didn't have to be a citizen of the United States. You didn't have to be born in the USA. I, you didn't have to be any of that stupid stuff. You just have to be one of the people or a person because the Constitution, well, person means no, 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 no. The people didn't mean what they mean. The people used the term person because they recognized that each one of them are and were considered persons. They meant the individual. They did not mean the legal fiction. Y'all need to go back and understand this stuff. If you don't, you're going to be lost forever. Lost in space, lost at sea, you're just going to be lost. Got to go. I'm out of here.